a real pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, the transition to sustainable transport systems is a huge part uh, of my role. Transport now accounts for the largest uh, emitter uh, of CO2 in terms of a sector. You know, it used to be the energy sector, uh, it's now very much the transport sector. We're looking at 13.1 megatons now, okay, that's decreasing from the baseline, uh, but nowhere near where collectively we all need it to be uh, for our future generations. I think the strategy we're, we're taking, uh, one is around technological advancements, so how do we uh, incentivize and uh, we use the appropriate disincentives so that people make the, the, the techno technology jump that we need them to do. And then the other side is behavioural change uh, as well, it's a kind of dual-pronged uh, approach uh, that we're taking. So promote technology, promote behaviour change uh, to hopefully to active travel. Um, so that is the, the, the strategy. Uh, I think buses remain uh, fundamentally important to, to, to the economy. Um, I was going to start with one thing, though, based on what the Minister said. Shenzhen. Anyone know where Shenzhen is? Yeah, China, just north of Hong Kong. Shenzhen is now a fully electric bus town. 16,000 vehicles. Within the next three years, they'll have 17,000 taxis, all electric as well. In 2017 alone, the city of Shenzhen put $500 million US dollars into helping support that in one year. So if we're going to have ambition, and we should, no doubt about that, we need to be realistic about both the timescales, the effort, and the costs of fundamental change. The other thing that's really, I think, a revolution here is ticketing and the absolutely transformation of the ticketing offer for a sector which was very, in many respects, very old-fashioned, actually within probably a couple of years, all of the big five, quite a lot of the medium small operators will have switched to contactless. It is amazing. You almost have to pinch yourself in terms of the scale of that change. But it also creates, starts to create a relationship between us and our customers. This is, this is the bus sector joining the 21st century, maybe slightly belatedly, but doing it with a real pace. Interesting, when um, I took over as uh, the leader of Glasgow City Council, I also took on the role of city convener for inclusive economic growth. Um, and within the context of talking about the city's economy, I think I've probably talked about transport um, and travel and connectivity more than, than any other topic. For us, transport, travel, uh, movement, um, it is, it, it's something that enables social and economic inclusion. It, it enables economic growth. Um, it delivers on public health. Um, and again, that links back to our, our low emission zone. Um, so we're, we're trying to alter the language a bit and talk about um, mobility and about connectivity and about understanding those as a service, as a public service that we as a local authority, as a city authority, um, and as the city providing leadership for um, Team Glasgow, as we call it, um, have to recognise. And I think one of the things I, that I've picked up more of this week is, is that transport is complementary. We're not necessarily competing with each other in every market. So we need perhaps to stop saying this is what you should do to spend more money on rail, more money on roads, more money on trams, more money on air. We should be looking at what we are doing to deliver connectivity and access and inclusion to a much wider section of the community. What we need to be able to put ourselves in is the position of well, what is the right choice what gives you the best um, overall outcome in terms of efficiency and affordability. We're still looking for one solution to address what is a big multivariate problem. We have to be comfortable uh, with lots of different solutions playing a part in a much bigger challenge. It's actually just going to be about identifying the best regional solutions to address regional priorities.